family. Most of you saw in the paper, I guess, where his stepfather passed away, and they'll be showing him today uh, from 1 till 9, and then his funeral's tomorrow. So that's Mr. Euros Williams, and what's your funeral home to you? Earl Little, Earl Little, Earl Little Funeral Home. So if you get a chance, stop up there. I know uh, it'd be a blessing to Richard. Uh, also, Sister Barbara Bryant has been in the hospital this week, and Clifford said she's still, she's home, but she's still not feeling very well. I pray that God would touch her. Uh, Charlene Turner, her brother's grandson, was in that wreck out on North Dixie Highway where the, the man was killed out at the curb there by Witch Lumber. Uh, is it Witch Lumber? Carter Lumber. Uh, night before last. And he has brain damage. And I, I don't know, what, what was it, uh, Dawn, they said?
And you know what? Both of them went to my cousin where he pastors in on State Avenue in Cincinnati, Philip Fury's church, and got saved. And my cousin had a wreck, totaled her car, and mom said that she told uh, Aunt Bessie, said, I know that's a sign, and I, I need to get right with the Lord. She's been in church the last four Sunday nights there, put that tavern up for sale, that bar, put it up for sale, said, I can't get right, right till I get rid of something like this. And, and mom said, I've never, never seen her so concerned and, and interested. I, she said, pray that it don't wear off. Amen. She's about 60, 62 years old and needs the Lord, needs the Lord bad. I, I said, we'd have the church praying. We've got David's church praying. Amen. I believe that God will save her. I really do. Amen. How many has an unspoken request today? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your divine presence. And we thank you, Lord, because you're a God that knows what we have need of. You know our hearts. You know the burden of our heart, dear God. You know how to take care of us, Lord, and how to move and answer prayers for us, dear Jesus. We pray in your Lord because of your sufficiency. In ourselves, we're nothing. We're helpless. We're undone. Lord, but through and by you, all things are possible. We pray for every request this morning. We pray, Lord, that you would touch in the hat, Lord, of those that are sick today. Sister Barbara Bryant, Debbie, and others, Lord, that have special needs. We pray, Lord, for that young man that broke his back, and Charlie's brother, his grandson, dear God. We pray that you would touch in all of these requests today. Lord, especially them that's unsaved, Lord, don't let them die and go out into eternity, Lord, without accepting you as Savior. We pray, dear God, that you would lift each one up that's here today and help us to be encouraged in you, because, Lord, we know where our strength comes from. It comes from you. Bless each one, Lord. Help us, Lord, to live the life that's true and live for you and work for you. Lord, bless you every part of this service in Jesus' name. Amen.
couldn't go forward. He just walked and just about as good as high yesterday. And, and uh, so God still answers prayer. That's right. Amen. We're going to have Sister Wanda come and sing. And if she's not got another song, maybe sing that one you sung the other night.
smart, to better equipped. I know the Word of God. I know. Uh, I always loved Sunday school where you, you could ask questions and, and uh, hear the different comments and so forth on the Scripture, the Word of God. But really that's what teaching is for, to better equip us. And you know what? We're, ser we're saved for one purpose. And that is to help enlarge the kingdom of God. Amen. And... Uh, I pray that some way we could just get our own people saved. What a glorious thing that would be. Is that right? Get our own people saved. I said this morning in our adult class that everybody's not going to be saved. Uh, it's, not, it's not God's will that any should perish. But the majority of this world today is going to be lost. Amen. Going to... Eternal uh, punishment, eternal damnation, as the Bible says, because it said, wide is the gate, and uh, broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And I want to stay on that straight and narrow way. Amen. Now, when it said straight, now I believe we, need, we have to walk straight. I know that. And, uh, uh, but, but when, when it talked about straight, it was S-T-R-A-I-T, which means a narrow place, place like a straight, a, a peninsula or something. And, and that, that was in opposition to the broad way that leads to heaven. And uh, so, so the way is straight, S-T-R-A-I-T, straight, it's a narrow way. And uh, that ought to be our desire is to make it to heaven. Take, take somebody, somebody with us. us. When, when we, we get, get there, there we'll, we'll can can have, have somebody say, you, you was a blessing to me. You, you was a help to me. me. It'd, It'd be terrible, terrible for... Now, I believe, it, I believe in two, two different judgments, judgments and, and we're, we're not, not going to teach on that today or preach on it, but I believe there's going to be a judgment for the children of God, which is what we call the judgment seat of Christ, and, and then, then after the thousand years reign with Christ, there's going to be another judgment, which the Bible calls the great white throne judgment, which nobody will be there but them that's not lived right. Amen. That's the only ones who will be judged at that time. But at the judgment seat of Christ, there will be a lot of people that come up. They will be judged to receive their rewards, receive their crowns, some will not receive anything, but everything that they've done will be burned up, according to the Word of God. How many believes that? That's what the Word says. Everything will be burned up, yet they may be saved. And I know a lot of people say, well, won't it be wonderful just to be saved? And I, that's true. But I don't believe there's a one of us here that can fathom the good things that God has for God's people that's going to take more than just being saved. Paul said he was caught up into the third heaven, amen, and he saw things that were unutterable, that nobody would believe, that nobody would understand, and he went on to say, it's not in her, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men. We've not even been able to think about the good things that God has for His people. Amen. There's going to be some that's going to be ashamed in judgment because they've not been a help, but they've been a hindrance. Amen. I don't want to be a hindrance. I want to be a help to somebody, don't you? Amen. That's not my lesson today. you got your Bible turned with us to the 27th chapter of the book of Acts. And, and I'm, I'm going to start, start reading at verse 21. Acts 27, 21. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me, and not have loosed from Crete, and to have gained this harm and this loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night an angel of God, whose I am, and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, 
And, and lo, God, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me. I was thinking about faith this week. How can we increase our faith? How we ought to believe God? Heard, heard a story, you may have heard this, it was on one of the TV programs, uh, about a man that had, uh, uh, he was a preacher, he had a degree, he had, uh, uh, he had uh, schooling that gave him intellect, and he said that uh, he had a problem, I forgot exactly, Mary, do you remember, he, he had something, I'm going to tell you a story and forgetting part of it, huh? but anyway, he had a, a, a a problem, he needed healing. He needed help from the Lord. Uh, oh, I know what it was. It, it was something on his foot. He couldn't hardly walk. Uh, it was a, a growth uh, that was on his foot, a bunion or something. It, it had grown. And, and uh, he said there he was to, to be in this church in a healing campaign, and he couldn't hardly walk. He was almost crippled. And he said he woke up, and he said that was bigger than it ever was, and it was blue, and he couldn't hardly get his shoe on. Said he went in church and there was a boy that had had a, 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 a mental problem all of his life. He was born that way. He said he was up around 20 years old and he had a, had a cowboy hat on and had a pair of holsters and he was down behind the pews and he was, you know, would uh, jump up every once in a while in this church and shoot somebody. You know, this was before church started, and uh, act like he was shooting somebody, and a great grown boy, but had the mentality of a little kid. And, and uh, he said that uh, he was praying, he said, Lord, uh, help me, help me. And he said he had prayed and fasted and prayed and fasted and, and uh, everything, and he said, uh, he said that, uh, that he didn't know what to do, and he said he started out, to where they was having a class in a room and, and he said this little boy or this big old boy was shooting that gun he said tell this he said he felt the impression to have that kid say a word of prayer for him he said huh he said I'm not crazy have a, a crazy man pray for me uh, a boy that that is is uh, his mind's not right anyway and have him pray for me and he said uh, he started out and he said he felt that impression so much and he said that uh, he, he thought, well, he'll do it. And he said, uh, he called him by his name, whatever his name was, and said, come over here. He said, I want you to say a prayer for me. He said, I want you to ask the Lord, heal me. And he said, that big old boy said, oh, Lord, heal uh, this man. Heal him. And that mentioned his name and went back to shooting his gun. And he said, you know what? He said, I got healed. He said, I got healed. He said, that went down in three days. He said, that went down to nothing. Amen. And he said, I, I just thought of something. It, amen. It's not knowing all the time that counts, but it's faith. Amen. Faith and honor and faith. And you know a child sometimes uh, is sick and they can say, pray for me. And many times they have more faith in our prayers than we do praying the prayer. Is that right? Amen. I'd like to preach just a little bit on faith today. Amen. Prayer and faith are two of the most powerful weapons that the church has today to use against the devil. Amen. The Bible spoke in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, and verse 34. It spoke of those who by faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, and stopped the mouth of lions. So, Faith is a powerful weapon, isn't it? Amen. And faith bypasses our intellect. Amen. And trying to reason things out and think things out. Amen. Faith goes around that and bypasses that. Amen. And without faith, the Bible said it's impossible to please God. And I believe we're in an age today where there's a spirit of doubt and unbelief. And it's not only in the world, but... There's a spirit of doubt and unbelief also in the church world that, that hinders the move of God. Amen. Jesus.
just one time the Bible said went unto his own country uh, and that was around Nazareth uh, and it said he did not many mighty works there because of what? Because of their unbelief. Uh, amen. What was it? They said, well, we know this man. Uh, we've known him ever since he was a boy. We know his mother and we know his father and we know his brothers and sisters uh, and they couldn't believe uh, that he was the Son of God. Uh, amen. And it said that he couldn't do or didn't do many mighty works there because uh, of their unbelief. Uh, one thing, I, I do know that our unbelief hinders, uh, amen, a, a move of God uh, in this day that we live in. Uh, one thing that we know, too, uh, that we're saved uh, by faith. Uh, it's not anything that we've done, uh, amen, or anything that we attempt to do, uh, amen, uh, but we're saved by faith in God. Uh, that's why I had a hard time uh, of accepting the Lord as my Savior, uh, because I couldn't believe uh, that it was so simple, uh, amen, to say, Lord, I believe uh, that you forgive me of my sins, uh, and I'm accepting what you've done for me uh, on the cross of Calvary. Uh, there's one group that come to Jesus one time uh, in the ch sixth chapter of the book of St. John, uh, and they said, what shall we do uh, that we might work? the works of God. And he answered, and he said, this is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he hath sent. Amen. That's the, what I want you to do. That's doing the work of God. Amen. Believe on me as the Son of God. The Bible said, if you want anything from God, you first must believe that he is, and then that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And not only that, we're an overcomer. Amen. By our faith in God. First John 5 and 4 said, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. And we need that today. There's many that are falling by the wayside because their faith has grown weak. Amen. But I'm an overcomer by my faith in God. Not because of who I am, but because of who He is. Not because of what I've done, but because of what He's doing. Amen. In my life. I'm an overcomer. I can't keep myself. Amen. I can't make it. But thank God. Amen. I have faith in a God that's went through everything and knows every trial and tribulation and everything that I have to face. Amen. And He helps me to overcome day by day. Some days we don't have too much trouble. And then there's other days that the old devil, he'll just pour his fiery darts one after another. But thank God, I'm overcomer by my faith. When I get to heaven, I won't say I made it because I'm Roy Cornelius' son, or I won't make it. Amen. I can't say I make it because I'm pastor or who I am, but I'll say that I've made it because of my faith in a God that sent His Son to die. Amen. And He's helped me day by day. Amen. He's our overcoming power today. If we don't continue, as our Sunday school lesson said this morning, in the Word of God, we won't make it. Is that right? But thank God I'm an overcomer. Amen. Not because of what I know and not because of my intellect. Amen. Which is not very much. But I'm an overcomer because I know Him, the one that overcame. Amen. We're an overcomer because of Him. Because of our faith in Him. Amen. The Bible said faith comes one way. Amen. By hearing. Amen. And hearing by the Word of God. Amen. The, the Word of God builds our faith. When we see of what God has done for other people, and we hear of what God has done in the Word of God, 
Amen. We hear how the great giants depended on God and God didn't let them down. Amen. We we can, uh, the Bible said, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. That's the way we receive it. And people that don't dig into the Word of God and they don't study the Word of God and they don't like to hear the Word of God talk to them, amen, you'll find that most of the time their faith is very weak. Amen. But people that love the Word of God, you'll find that their, their faith is stronger. Amen. Because they depend on the Word of God and it comes by the Word of God. Amen. But I'll tell you something. If there's ever a day that we need that childlike faith, that we're able to step out on the promises of God. I heard one man preaching now. Faith is, and, and it said faith is a blind leap into the dark. Amen. Well, I'll tell you, that's not necessarily faith, and I want to tell you why. Amen. The Bible said, amen, that, uh, that, that who was it had faith, in, uh, had faith and he pleased God. Enoch had a testimony that he pleased God. The Bible said without faith, uh, it's impossible uh, to please God. Uh, amen. But listen, what did the Bible say that Enoch done? Enoch walked with God. Is that right? Amen. So faith is not just necessarily a leap into the dark, not knowing what's going to happen, but faith, amen, is dependent on a God that knows the end from the beginning. Amen. Faith is dependent on what the Word says, whether I believe it or not. We've got a God that's able to save, and we've got a God that's able to heal, and we've got a God that's able able to encourage and lift up. We've got a God that's able to answer prayer. Whether I believe it or not, the Word of God said it. If we stand on it, we're living right. I believe God will uphold His Word. Amen. Amen. I believe that. I believe He'll uphold His Word. I believe too many times we live beneath our privileges because we try to reason things out. We try to think things out. And I just don't believe it can happen this way because of the circumstances. You know, I, I, I believe that we ought to change things a little bit. The circumstances look bad. I don't care what circumstances, how bad they look. Uh, amen. If it's God's will uh, and we're in God, God can move the circumstances. Is that right? That's why I like to preach on what I read here. Uh, amen. About Paul. Uh, you listen a little bit about well, this story that we, that we read there to you. Amen. The Bible said, uh, amen, that Paul was a prisoner. Uh, amen. And he had witnessed to King Agrippa and he had witnessed to Festus uh, as a prisoner and now they was going to have to send him to Rome uh, because he had appealed uh, his case unto Caesar. Uh, and they put him on a ship uh, and that ship started sailing uh, and it went to Cyprus uh, and then it went to Myrna, which is Turkey now. Uh, and they changed ships and sailed into Crete uh, and they put up there for a little while uh, looking for good weather uh, and when the good weather came uh, they started for Italy uh, and they started for Rome. Uh, amen. And listen what Paul said uh, in verse 10. Sirs, uh, when they started out, uh, I perceive uh, that this voyage will be with much hurt, uh, with hurt and much damage, uh, not only of the lading of the ship, uh, but also of our lives. Uh, amen. And they sailed. They said, oh, we know better than you, Paul. Uh, amen. We're sailors. Uh, this is our occupation. Uh, we've been on the water uh, all of our life. Uh, we're not going to listen to you. Uh, and they started out. Uh, and the Bible said they hadn't been out there very long uh, till there came a typhoon uh, and they thought they was going to uh, drown. Uh, they threw everything out of the boat uh, to lighten the boat. Uh, they couldn't even set the compass uh, to see where they were. Uh, they let the ship go. Uh, nobody was even steering it. Uh, they let it toss and go any way that it wanted to. Uh, amen. But you know what the Bible said? Uh, after a long uh, abstinence, uh, fasting, uh, Paul had fasted and no doubt prayed. Uh, amen. He came up uh, and said, listen, I've had a visit uh, right during the storm. Uh, amen. An angel of the Lord. Uh, God sent him down uh, from where the sun uh, is shining uh, down through the clouds uh, and he stood by me uh, and said, Paul, uh, everything uh, is going to be all right. Uh, amen. The wind uh, was still blowing uh, and the wind Waves uh, were still rolling. Uh, but he said, everything uh, is going to be all right. Uh, and he said, I believe God. Uh, the circumstances.
circumstances uh, were still the same. Uh, but he said, I believe God. Uh, I want to tell you something, uh, Brother Smith, uh, if we had faith uh, like that, uh, God would move mountains for us. I believe that with all of our heart. No matter what it is, no matter how bad it looks, no matter how dark it is, uh, amen, we've got a God that's on board and He knows the end from the beginning. If we serve Him and live for Him and work for Him and yield our life, amen, to Him, He's going to bring us out all right over on the other side. Is that right? That's why I like to preach about Apostle Paul. Faith, the Bible said, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You might say, I'm having so much trouble today. Oh, you don't know about it. Boy, I tell you, we're in a world of trouble, but we have to put our faith in God. You might say, the devil's on me all the time. Amen. If he is, just put your faith in God. He'll help you to be an overcomer. You might say, I'm discouraged and I don't know what to do. Amen. You know what you ought to do? Say, I'm going to put my faith in God that's going to bring me out where the sun's shining after a while. Amen. I need healing. Amen. Believe God. Amen. What do you need today? Amen. Renewing. Salvation, healing, spiritual healing, uh, encouragement. Uh, amen. Believe God. Uh, he'll give it to you. You, you believe that? Uh, you believe the Word? Uh, he'll give it to you. As your faith is, uh, so be it unto you. Uh, somebody called. Uh, I, I don't remember who it was. Somebody called me this week uh, and said, Listen, uh, amen, I've done something. And you may think it's silly uh, the way I've done this. Uh, they was asking for a prayer to be answered. Uh, amen. And they told told me about it, what they had done. I, I said, I don't think you're silly. Uh, I don't think you're crazy. Uh, amen. I'll tell you something. Uh, I said, I believe what the Bible said. As your faith is, uh, so be it unto you. If God, uh, amen, says get up uh, and walk around this church, uh, amen, and you'll be healed, uh, amen, you know what you ought to do? Uh, if God says it, you ought to do it. Uh, have faith in God. Uh, he'll answer your prayer. Uh, if you're discouraged, uh, amen. And he tells you to open up uh, that Word of God uh, and read uh, the 23rd Psalm uh, where it said, The Lord uh, is my shepherd, uh, I shall not want. Uh, you read it. Uh, have faith in God. Uh, he'll encourage you. He'll lift you up. Amen. As your faith is. Too many things we try to reason out. I can't get that over enough. And we try to figure out and we say, well, that's crazy. That won't happen that way. I heard one man preaching one night. He was preaching. He said, if God tells you to jump through a wall, he said, jump. He'll make a hole if it's God. If God tells you something, he'll do it. Is that right? Amen. What about Moses? Let, let me just another minute or two, all right? We got another hour. <laughs> Moses saw something I've never seen before. He looked out. He saw a bush that was burning, and I saw a bush burn. But this one kept burning and burning and burning and burning and burning. And it wasn't consumed. He said, I've never seen anything like this. I'm going to go over and see what that is. He went over. He looked, saw that bush. When he got over there, the voice of God spoke and said, Moses, take your shoes off. You're on holy ground. You're on holy ground. Moses could have said, now that's a silly thing to do. I'm out here in the desert. Amen. But you know what? Moses done what God said. Yes. Amen. Moses became the leader of Israel. So many things might seem simple to us. But I'm going to tell you, if God says it. Now, I, I, I'm going to qualify this, and I'm not going to. I believe that we, people can get highly emotional and out of order times by saying God said this and God said that. But I'm talking if God tells you to do something, no matter how silly it seems, He might be trying to bring your ego down just a little bit. 
You know what I'm talking about. He might be trying to bring your ego down just a little bit. Knock the pride out of you. My mother, amen, she got saved back in 1931, I believe it was. Young girl, she's only about 30 or 31. She's about 18, 17 or 18 years old. Uh, maybe 16 when she got saved. But anyway, she was praying for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And she said she saw some of the people, they'd fall to the floor and they'd receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost there in the floor. The Lord, it just seemed like the Spirit would knock them down. And they'd receive the Holy Ghost. And she said, I don't think you necessarily have to get in the floor to get the Holy Ghost. I believe you have to yield to God. But my mother said this. She said, if I have to get the Holy Ghost that way, I won't get it. But you know how my mother got the Holy Ghost? My mother said all at once, the Spirit of God knocked her, but she didn't care. And she started speaking in tongues. She got it just exactly. And it wasn't that the Lord wanted her necessarily on the floor, but the Lord was knocking a little of the pride out of her. That's what it was. The pride. Amen. You have to be humble to receive the things of God. She said, if I have to get it that way, I won't get it. But she got it just exactly the way she said she wouldn't get it. She had to be willing. And whatever you need of God, you have to be willing. But faith is something between you and God. My faith should not affect your faith. Is that right? Amen. Except our live right to help build your faith. But you, you believe, believe God for yourself. For yourself. Amen. Amen. You can't be saved for nobody else. And you can't believe God. Nobody else can believe God for you. Let's stand together. Have faith in God. in what you know is true. Keep believing. You know the Lord will see you through. When troubles rise in your life. And you don't know what to do, you'll be fine if you'll just keep believing. Listen to that. Hallelujah. Keep believing. Keep believing in God. In what you know is true, keep believing. Have faith in God. You know the Lord will see you through when troubles rise in your life. Let's come to the front. And you don't Stand here as Karen sings that. Be fine. Another verse or so of it. Just, just keep, keep believing. believing. Keep I know there's believing. needs here this morning. And I know God's able to meet those needs. Keep believing. Hallelujah. The Lord will see you through when troubles rise in your life. Hallelujah. Don't know what to do. Fine. If you'll just keep believing. Keep believing. Hallelujah. Help us to believe. In what you know is true. Keep believing. Hallelujah. You know the Lord will see you through when troubles rise in your life. And you don't know what to do. that there's not something that is troubling or something that is heavy on the hearts here today. And the devil, I've been preaching this the last few weeks, has seemed like he's assaulted and trying to assault us. Amen. Not only us, I guess everywhere, but we feel it here because this is where we are, trying to destroy and trying to pull back. 
But I'm going to tell you something. I feel like have saying this more. Let's have faith in God that's able to move and everything. We need to pray for Mike here. Mike, you don't care for me. Saying that Mike needs our prayers. The devil, don't you think the devil doesn't have power? Because he does. And if we are slip or let down just a little bit, he'll pull us back. Mike's back in Teen Challenge here. And we need to pray for him. I love Mike. And I believe, I really believe that with all my heart that Mike loves the Lord. Amen. But you know what? The devil hates to leave go of some of those that were his his men, you know. Mike, we're going to be praying for him. We need to pray for Danny Minton. Danny Minton needs our prayers. I don't know how many people in this town know Danny, and they, they, they knew his life, and he, he had an effect upon a lot of people. We don't think too much of it because we know him. You know what I mean? He's here. But I know I hear it. People talk to me, and if you're in business, people say, oh, I know something happened to that guy. But Danny needs needs our prayers right now. And we've got... John needs our prayers right now. And you know what I'm praying? I'm praying every day. I'm praying, God, make John Haynes so miserable. Amen. That he won't be able to sleep. He won't be able to be by himself. Make him miserable. More miserable than he's ever been. And I'm going to tell you to some of you that need special help today, we've got a God that knows have faith in that God. He's coming back soon. He's coming back soon. We've not got time to fool around with anything except serving Him. And you know what? We need to have a spirit of compassion. I, I, I don't believe we want to give up on anybody until there's no chance. And if we give up and say, that's good enough for Him, we need to be in an altar ourselves. Is that right? We, we need, need to be, be in the altar. altar. But we, we ought to say, Lord, as long as there's breath and as long as there's hope, and we can reach out and help somebody, help us do that. Whatever your need is, raise your hand this morning. Let's just pray, God, give us faith to stand. Give us faith to be overcomers. Give us faith. Help us to be encouraged. Give us faith. Lord, lift our faith and build our faith. Lord, help us to be a, a bulwark and a, a pillar, Lord.
worship the Lord. And uh, I know last Sunday night we had this house packed. And it looks like tonight they might have been here an hour ago or something left. We got to run their clocks back or something. No, we was up at the funeral home just a while ago, and we've got quite a few of our people that's up there and quite a few that's gone this weekend. And uh, we're thankful, though, to be out again on Sunday night to worship the Lord. Let's stand together. Let's sing this song. We're going to have Brother Randy lead us in a couple congregational numbers in a minute. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing
to the Lord. Amen. Because when it comes time that we stand before God, we don't stand before nobody but Him. Is that right? And if we've done things that's pleasing to Him, amen, we'll hear those precious words where He says, enter in, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things, and I'll make you ruler over many. Amen. We're going to go before God in prayer tonight, and uh, take your request to the Lord. Uh, sometimes uh, people uh, mention requests before service, and if I don't write those down, I, I forget them. But uh, we do have some requests. It seems like somebody else gave me a request, too, of somebody that was sick before Sir Herb. Right, Herb was talking about his mother-in-law being sick. The request we give in this morning, we still want to remember Sister Barbara Bryant. Pray that God would touch her and also uh, uh, the young boy, he's either 12 or 13 years old, that was in this automobile accident. That's uh, Charlene Turner's brother. It's his grandson. And uh, they uh, had his head, he had a head injury and his brain was exposed and they think he might lose sight of one eye. Don't know if any brain damage or anything, but we do pray for them. And pray that God would touch. Also was just up to the funeral home and uh, I told uh, Mrs. Williams, that's uh, uh, Richard Sharp's mother, that we'd be praying for her. She's 82 years old. She's had a lot of heartaches and a lot of difficulty in her life. I remember probably about 25 years ago, I preached at one of her boys' funerals. He worked up here at Rawsonville, Fords, and he was working on one of those big presses. I forget how many tons it was, and something happened. That press came down and smashed him. It hit him from the, the shoulder up and killed him instantly. And uh, uh, what sometimes we have heart funerals. You know what I mean. You don't. Uh, people killed instantly. You don't. If they don't know the Lord, there's not much you can do. Much you can say. I remember preaching a young man's funeral that uh, that died with an overdose of drugs here about four or five years ago. And uh, I tried my best to preach how that we have to. Uh, accept Jesus as our Savior. And that's all. I didn't know nothing to say about the boy, so I said nothing good nor bad, except that he's in the hands of a God that's just, and God knows our ways, and God's the ones that will judge us one day, not man. But I never will forget, as some of them was walking out, they bawled me out there at the funeral home, said, listen, he was a good man. He was a good boy. And he was... Uh, uh, he was, uh, he treated his friends good. And you ought to have said something good about him because surely he's in heaven. I want to tell you something. A person can be good, treat their family good, treat their mother, wife, children good. But if we don't know Jesus Christ as Savior, amen, we're in the hands of a just God. Is that right? Amen. We want to remember them. Brother Al, come and say a word and take requests tonight. Amen. It is a privilege to be back in the house of the Lord. Amen. The Lord has given us great things, folks. There's a lot of us here that have never had to be in want, never had to sit on the street corner and beg for money or not have a place to sleep or a family to love us. But God gave us something more than that. He gave us a son that he would be our sacrifice. You know, it says in one place that he was our propitiation for our sin. Well, he was the one that 
silence God, it means that God is silenced by that. And when our sin comes before God, if the blood of Jesus is over our lives, there's nothing to be said, amen? But that we are born again and covered by that blood. Last night we preached about that. It doesn't matter if you're a good moral man or a good moral woman. It takes the blood of Jesus to be on your lives. And I tell you what, God is concerned of our souls, but he's also concerned of our needs tonight, folks. I gave a request this morning for Patsy Beheimer. Um, I talked to Jennifer late last night, and her mom had, had another attack. Um, something, something is causing some severe, severe headaches. It almost causes her to go blind for the moment, and it causes nausea and great pain. She was in Good Samaritan Hospital for four days. They ran a couple of spinal taps and angiogram. They didn't know what it was, but I told Pat last night we'd be praying for her. And I told her I gave a request at the youth rally, and I told a couple other pastors, and they were praying. She goes, well, I'm bound to get better with all those prayers going up. See, that's what's going to make the difference. The pastor talked this morning. It's the faith. As thy faith is, amen, I, I believe there's some places there in the New Testament, about six or seven, where Jesus said, thy faith has made thee whole, or because of your faith you've been made whole. See, it's up to our faith. I don't know about you, but I'm believing God is still healing, amen. He's still giving to our people, and he's still wanting to work here at North Monroe Street and work in our families. And I pray to you, um, Remember Patsy in your prayers, and she desires her prayers. Anyone on this side have a prayer request? Go Roger. Just remember that one. Anyone else? Yes. We need to remember Glenn. If I remember as a young boy going out there to the auction and always seeing Glenn out there at the auction. I see him coming to church now. He's not quite as agile as he used to be. But I tell you what, I read in the Bible of a man that said he was felt a lot younger. One place you read of a man who was going to take a mountain. He said, I'm going to take that mountain because God promised it to me. Amen. As a man of youth, I want you to know God wants to touch our senior saints. And I believe Glenn and Viva are good people. And let me remember them in our prayers. Remember that. Brother Kearney. Remember her current special request. Anyone else on this side?
see Sister Geneva back from her trip. Of course, Brother Sister Johnson back was here this morning. Sister Baker been sick, and she's back in church. Good to see Brother Sister Leach. Brother Leach got what renewed up last Sunday night here. And I'll tell you what a great what a great service that was last Sunday night. And uh, that started it by him obeying God and God blessing him. And then it, the rest of us got a blessing. Amen. I didn't even see him praying over here in this second seat where Sister Newton uh, was praying. But all at once I saw those hands go up and, and the blessings of the Lord come down. Amen. How do you feel? when you got saved or got renewed up and made a new commitment to God. Amen. It just seemed like heaven come down. Is that right? Amen. Praise God. Wonderful to be in the house of God. I've got a card here uh, for a thank you to the church. This is from the family of Rena Range. This is Troy. Troy. His uh, aunt you know, passed away uh, here a few weeks ago to all the church. We all thank you for all the prayers. If it wasn't for them, we couldn't have got through this. Thank you so much for the lovely picture of Jesus knocking on the door. With a warm note of appreciation to thank you for the gift and to tell, much, tell you how much, just how much your thoughtfulness meant. And uh, Troy's aunt was 90. What? 98 years old. 98 years old. Brother Cecil Johnson, our assistant general overseer, preached her funeral. And uh, I don't know uh, when we get up to age somebody. I think it was Troy asked, telling me a while ago at the funeral home how you feel when you get so old. And uh, he said, you won't, won't be long, you'll be up with me. I said, I'll never catch you. I'll never catch you. You'll always be older than me. But uh, years take a toll on all of us, doesn't it? Amen. And we look at uh, time passes. Time doesn't wait on anybody. Amen. Time is swiftly passing by. Amen. That's why the Bible said what we ought to work for the Lord while it's day. The night cometh when no man can work. So it's time to work for God. We're going to receive our offering tonight. The offering, of course, on Sunday night goes for the church expense. And I told you, I believe it was last week, that this has been a great year so far. The, uh, the first four months, uh, that's uh, Ju July, August, September and up to where we are in October has been the best year we've ever had so far in finance, in tithe. And I'm going to tell you something. I give thanks to God yes, for you that feel your obligation, yes. amen, to the church. And uh, God will bless you. And uh, God's going to do great and mighty things for us. We believe that. But uh, you give tonight. You can drop your tithe in. And uh, God will bless you for it. Let's stand together. Amen. Praise God.
go, Jennifer. Well, you get it real quick, and we're going to have Dana sing for us and Sister Doreen. And uh, I want you to remember, now Wednesday night, uh, this coming Wednesday night, I'll be teaching in Genesis. We're still in Genesis. What chapter, Jerry, was that? 27th? 27th chapter, book of Genesis. I had the privilege of teaching our uh, teens this last Wednesday night. And I'm going to tell you something. I really enjoyed that. Um, I don't know how many was in that class, Brother Roger, probably 25 or, or more. That was in uh, maybe more than that. And uh, they were real responsive. Uh, they helped and... Uh, and uh, we really enjoyed it. Had quite a few that raised their hand that they were Christians, and quite a few that raised their hand they needed to be saved. And we need to pray for our young people Amen. today. Yes, they need uh, need the Lord. And I'm going to tell you something. It's harder than ever for the young people in this age that we live in. They have things to face that we never had to face. Is that right? And some sometimes maybe we get older and we we forget. And maybe don't think of what the young people are going through, but if you uh, have anything to do with the school system today to realize what they're teaching in the schools, uh, a lot of it they don't publicize it and it just gets out little by little. But we're in a terrible day for young people today. And uh, they've got a lot of pressures. And that's on account of the Bible said the devil is as a roaring lion. Amen. Seeking whom he may devour. All right, we're going to have Sister Doreen come and sing for us at this time. And then Dana will have you sing next. <coughs>
given us in this land that we live in, the good things that God has blessed us. Lisa? <laughs> here tonight. Newt's been sick and we're glad to see him tonight. Newt's got a, a growth on his arm and he has going to have that taken off a, a Tuesday week. Is that right, Newt? And we want to pray that God would touch him. God's able to take that off even before that surgery. Amen. Amen.
of lords. Amen. And he's alive and well and still on the throne today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise God. God. Jennifer, you not got it? Okay. We'll have maybe another song. Brother Randy, come and sing us a special tonight. Hallelujah. God bless you, Shirley.
encourage me. That makes everything worthwhile. Is that right? Amen. Thank God. I'm glad. We couldn't hardly dismiss this morning. I felt the Lord uh, was singing that song. Amen. As, as we dismissed. And it was probably 20 after 12, somewhere around there. Felt the presence of God. And I feel that same presence here tonight. Amen. You know, you look around at some of these big mega churches, and if you're not careful, the old devil will say, well, my goodness, what are you doing? What are you doing? You, some of them's got 6,000 and 7,000 and 5,000 and 10,000. But I'll tell you something. I look at you tonight, amen, hearing Sister Shirley testify, and Brother Leach should give his heart back to the Lord, and some of you that's been saved uh, not very long, but you're working for God, Amen. It's not in the numbers. Is that right? Is that right? It's not in the numbers, but it's in the spirit that God's working with. Amen. What what did the Bible say that Noah preached? Amen. Probably a hundred years. And who did he get saved? Amen. He got his family saved. They got in the boat. Boy, wouldn't it be wonderful if we get our family saved? If we could get our family saved, our children, amen, our uh, husbands, and get them in the house of God. Amen. What a great revival that would be. Sorry, Randy. <laughs> we got it back. Oh, God, isn't it? Oh, Do you know how it feels to know something's missing and hear a still small voice that you just keep dismissing? Do you know how it feels to be troubled inside, to think just for you on a wrong
to know how it feels to be able to lay down and put your head on your pillow and say, if anything wants to happen tonight, I'm ready to go and meet the Savior. Amen. Thank God for this day. And I heard they had a wonderful youth rally last Amen. night. Had two, two saved? Two saved. We thank the Lord for that. you got your Bibles, turn with us to Matthew chapter 24, 24th chapter of Matthew. Something that I preached on this many, many times over the years. I was kidding Mary a while ago, and I said, you know, this is the 33rd November, uh, October, uh, that we've been pastor of this church. Been here 33 Octobers. Not hardly 33 years, but we've been here 33 Octobers. 33, uh, we came here 32 years ago this last July. While, while we was talking like that, uh, we was talking after we come out of the funeral home. She was, Mary was asking me about some people and that I rem remembered about 30 years ago some things. And Mary said, we've been around here a long time. <laughs> We've been around here a long time. And she didn't mean just around here. She meant around here. Around. <laughs> We've been around a long time. And uh, re you remember things that's happened over the years. How many have we got here that's 32 years old or younger? Amen. The house got both hands up. <laughs> Quite a few. Some of you just barely get by that 32 years. Robert. Some of you. Uh, but that is a long time, and you, you meet a lot of people, so many people you meet over the years. A lot of times you know their face when you meet them and uh, don't remember the name. And the older you get, the easier it is to forget the name. I said I don't believe I ever had a day as bad as this morning. <laughs> Laughing about Louie. Talk, Louie, of course, worked all night last night, worked nine hours, had to work that extra hour, you know. And then he still came to Sunday school and then went home and slept and he's back tonight. And uh, you could overlook him for talking about uh, April. Was it April? February. 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 Talking about February. But when I started calling Thanksgiving Easter, <laughs> well, right after Easter, <laughs> somebody said, I never heard you make that many mistakes at one time. I said, well, you've not listen real close I guess because uh, we make them but we're thankful that the Lord has let us be around a long time is that right I told somebody I don't mind a bit getting older there's only one other alternative to getting older and I'm glad to be alive <laughs> amen glad to be alive 24th chapter of St. Matthew uh, we're going to read verse 29, starting at 29. It said, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn a parable of the fig tree when his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves. Ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the door. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, 
marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And I'd like to preach tonight on the coming of the Lord. I was reading this week about uh, the coming of the Lord and how the, this writer was urging uh, the Pentecostals especially to be careful, very careful about the age that we're living in because we have so many date setters. He said uh, we have to be wary, beware, be wary of those that set dates. And how that he believed that the coming of the Lord is imminent. But even if the Lord doesn't come back in this decade and before the year 2000 or the year 2010 or the year 2020, that still doesn't diminish the soon coming of the Lord. Amen. Because the Bible said, Occupy till I come. Work till I come. We're supposed to live... In a way, in a manner that the Lord could come at any time. But we're to work like it might be 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. We've got a work to do. We can't quit our work because we believe the Lord's coming back. But i like to speak on the coming of the Lord tonight. Now, this that we read was in response to three questions asked of Jesus by his disciples. Number one. They were talking about when shall these things be, and that was, they had asked, he had said there will come a time when there won't be one stone left upon another, talking about the temple area and the temple. And they said, when shall these things be? Number two, what shall be the sign of thy coming? And number three, end of the end of the world. And we know in verse 4 and 5 of of this uh, 24th chapter of uh, St. Matthew. Amen. He said, watch out for deceivers. He said, take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. That don't mean necessarily they'll be saying that they are Christ. But in other words, they can come in the name of the Lord and deceive many. And, and we have that today, today and I spoke of it a little bit this morning on the Dominion group or theory and the kingdom people today and the New Age movement that really believes that they're going to usher in a Messiah, it's really a humanistic society. But we're in a day when deceivers certainly are at work. Amen. And we're in a day, the Bible said another thing in verse 6. It said that you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, and see that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And then he said in verse 10 of that chapter, he said there'll be betrayal, and there'll be hatred, uh, not only probably of the world, but probably even of Christians. Amen. Verse 10, there shall many shall be offended. And that word offended would be to make quit to stop many would be offended uh, and many and shall betray one another and shall hate one another and it went on to say and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many and in verse 12 it said because iniquity shall abound the love of many would wax cold now iniquity is not just sin Iniquity is wickedness and lack of moral principles. Amen. You look that up in Webster's Dictionary and see what it says. Lack of moral principles and wickedness. And it said because iniquity would abound, and these things would abound, the love of many would wax cold. And in verse 37, it goes on to say as it was in the days of Noah, so, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Amen. It said here that for in that day that were before the flood they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. In other words, 
Men and women will be busy with everyday life. Amen. Eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage. Busy with everyday life. Amen. Then he said in verse 44 of that chapter, he gave us a warning. He said, Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Uh, amen. That's a warning, isn't it? For be ye ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, Amen. The Son of Man cometh. Now, I believe there's more than one reason why the Lord didn't give a date for His return. Amen. There would be many that would procrastinate and put off and say, Well, I've got plenty of time. The Lord's not coming back till the year 2000, and they wouldn't do anything. Amen. For the Lord. But the Lord didn't want us to speculate. He wanted us to stay ready. He wanted us to be ready all the time. He wanted us to live in such a manner, amen, that he would come in the next hour. Somebody asked D.L. Moody one time, said, if, the, if you know the Lord was coming back tonight, amen, he was out planting some trees out in his garden, said, if you knew the Lord was coming back tonight, what would you be doing today? He said, I'd be planting trees. Amen, I'd be planting trees. In other words, I'd be doing what I'm doing right now. He said, in other words, he's winning people to the Lord, and he was uh, 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 a great evangelist that thousands uh, had been saved by his ministry, uh, and he meant that he was already living in such a manner that if he knew the Lord was coming back, he wouldn't change a thing. And that means something, doesn't it? Amen. To say, we're going to live in such a manner if we knew the Lord would come back before we got uh, home tonight that we wouldn't change a thing. We just live the way we're living because we're ready. Amen. For the return of the Lord. Amen. In St. Uh, Luke, the 21st chapter, verse 34 right, and 35, writing about the same things as, as Matthew, he said in this 34th verse, said, Take heed to yourself, lest at any time Amen. Your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting. And that word surfeiting means an overindulgence in eating and drinking or an overindulgence of anything. And he said, and drunkenness and cares of this life and many people's going to be lost. Amen. Taking care of this life. Amen. And, and he said, the cares of this life, and so that day come upon you unaware. Let me read it again. Take heed to yourself, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that day come upon you unaware. Amen. Many work and labor and toil and save, amen, to take care of this life. Amen. Taking care of these things uh, in this life. And the Bible said there, watch out for that, those things. Uh, amen. The cares of this life. That doesn't mean evil things. That doesn't mean that you have to be a drunkard or, or that you have to be uh, uh, hooked on uh, drugs or alcohol or anything like that. But it said, watch out. Amen. Even taking care of the things of this life. Amen. So that that day come upon you unaware. For as a snare, it said in the next verse, or a trap, shall it come upon all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Uh, amen. Uh, like a lot of times people are too tired, amen, to pray, too tired to go to church, and too tired to work for God. Amen. Because we've been taking care of the things of this life. Uh, you don't know how many times, uh, amen, that I get people that get me excuses. Uh, oh, I'm so tired. Uh, you don't know what all I've got to do. I want to tell you something. I wouldn't doubt what just about everybody's tired today. We're in a fast day, a fast-paced age, uh, and I don't care if you don't do anything much. Uh, before the day's over, you're tired. Uh, is that right? Amen. Uh, uh, tired. Uh, Mary said today, said, boy, I, I hate to see this.
this time change. It seems like I'm so tired. Amen. Right before church, it seemed like the day is so long. But listen what it said. Those things will come as a snare or a trap upon all them that dwell upon the whole earth. And don't fall into the trap of thinking only of earthly things, but spiritual things should be our number one priority. I want to preach tonight by the help of God. Not only the earthly cares and the cares that we have every day, but our spiritual priority ought to be number one. Amen. I thought we too worry too much a lot of times about the little things of life and most of the time those things that we worry about we couldn't change anyway if we wanted to. Amen. And, and uh, about 75 or 80 percent of the things that we worry about either never happen or if they do happen uh, we can't help it. Uh, amen. Is that right? Uh, but I'll tell you one thing uh, that we need to be worried about uh, and that's our spiritual life. Uh, amen. With God. How are we with the Lord? Uh, the devil. Uh, amen. If he gets just a little hold uh, or he gets a little opening uh, he's got his hand in uh, to try to destroy us uh, or to uh, uh, rob us of our victory and our joy but the word of God said in Colossians the third chapter 1 and 2 it said if ye then be risen with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ setteth on the right hand of God he said set your affections on things above not on things of this earth amen I want to tell you something heaven is my desire amen that's my hope the things of this world are going to pass away I don't care what you've got or what you've accumulated they'll pass away and the only thing that's secure amen today is what you've got a hold of spiritually in knowing Jesus amen the world is compelling and attractive today. Amen. But it's deceitful, and the end thereof is death. Is that right? Amen. Things look real pretty. Amen. So the devil, the things of the world are attractive, and that's why they make the television uh, commercial so attractive. Amen. If it wasn't, they couldn't, they couldn't get anybody to try their product, and especially when it comes to, uh, uh, to beer and, and uh, the commercials on many things that, uh, that are ungodly today. They try to make them so attractive, and the devil wants his wares attractive. He wants them to be compelling to you. Uh, amen. But you know what the devil does? Uh, he spins his web uh, and then waits. Have you ever watched a, a spider work? Amen. The spider, he spins a web. And I, I was reading the other day about uh, a spider, uh, different species of spiders. And I didn't think about preaching this tonight, so I didn't go back and, uh, and uh, uh, look all that up. Uh, but I wish I had. Uh, but I, in fact, this evening when I got to thinking about it, I couldn't even quite remember what book I read it in. Amen. But one thing the, the spider doesn't do is get trapped in its own web. Amen. Some way, they, they have uh, uh, something that they can either put on their, uh, what are those? Legs? <laughs> I guess they're legs. Amen. That, that, uh, that, that when they put that sticky stuff on the web, uh, amen, they don't stick to them. And then there's other spiders, I read, that, that'll that make a web, and, and when something comes that they want to catch, uh, it won't be one of them great big old webs where things are running uh, out, but it's a web that they throw. I didn't know this. They'll throw this uh, at their prey. Uh, amen. And they'll catch that whatever it is. Uh, Amen. And there's another one uh, uh, that uh, uh, makes a little cocoon and, and wraps uh, a little thing uh, around. And when their, their prey gets in that, uh, 
Amen. It just wraps it up like you'd go to a Taco Bell and it wrap up, wrap up a taco. Amen. And he gets that whole thing after it's wrapped up and takes it off over in the corner and eats it. Amen. Well, I want to tell you something. Amen. The devil is spinning his web today. Amen. And he's waiting. But listen what the Bible said in Galatians, the sixth chapter and the seventh verse. It said, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, he shall also reap. Amen. If you get too close to the spider's web, I'm talking about the devil. You know what will happen? You'll get stuck. Amen. And you'll be destroyed. The devil's waiting. He doesn't care who you are. Amen. But be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Amen. He'll also reap. I thought as I was studying, our nation has lived high when it comes to the materialism of this day for many years. Amen. And it's spawned a humanistic society that we're living in today that is spilled over into the church world. Now, you know what the humanist movement is or the humanist group or thinkers that they don't need God for anything. Amen. They don't need God. Amen. They can live without God and they can make it without God and they can make it by their self. And I thought of the, the materialistic age that we're living in has spawned this humanistic society that we don't need God. Amen. And it spilled over into the church world. We've got it good. Amen. We're rich and, and uh, uh, have increase of goods. And we have need of nothing. Amen. I, I thought of Paul said, uh, though in Second Th uh, Thessalonians, uh, in the second chapter, uh, he said, that's not the way it's going to be. Uh, he said, in the last day, uh, before the coming of the Lord, uh, that there would be uh, a falling away. Uh, amen. I felt this uh, this afternoon. Uh, amen. A falling away. Uh, and we're in the day uh, of the falling away. I believe that. Uh, amen. Uh, and listen. Uh, amen. Many uh, have left the old mar landmark. Uh, and many today... Uh, that are Pentecostal uh, are afraid of holiness, uh, afraid of that word, uh, afraid of holiness. Uh, we're serving uh, a holy God, uh, and without holiness, uh, we will not see God. Uh, amen. Uh, and listen, uh, we've lost the fire uh, to where many churches uh, don't shout anymore under the unction uh, of the Lord. Uh, they may have an emotion, uh, but I'm talking about uh, an unction of the Holy Ghost. Uh, amen. Uh, and we've got to the place, uh, I feel like preaching this, uh, where we have uh, the form of godliness. Uh, amen. Uh, and we talked this morning uh, a little bit about, uh, amen, the church age, uh, how people are looking uh, for the sensational uh, today. Uh, amen. Following uh, the signs. Uh, and we've got people uh, that are following everything that you can think of. Uh, amen. Uh, because it, it seems to them uh, that there's a little power in it. Uh, I want to tell you something. Uh, I'm going to preach what I feel. Uh, I believe that God uh, has enough power, uh, amen, to knock me uh, down to the floor. Uh, but I don't believe we have to blow uh, on anybody uh, to knock them down uh, to prove that we're a child of God. Uh, amen. I want to tell you something. Uh, I believe our life uh, will prove uh, whether we're a child uh, of God or not. Uh, I believe we ought to have a testimony uh, that we please God uh, and we ought to live uh, till we've got a good report uh, of them that are within uh, and without. Uh, and I don't have to prove uh, to you that I'm a child uh, of God. Uh, amen. I want to tell you something. Uh, if I am uh, a child of God, uh, God will bless somebody through my ministry. Uh, and God will bless somebody through your life. I believe that. I believe that. 
I, I, it kind of bothers me. I hear some of these saying, now do you believe I'm a servant of God? Now do you believe because this happened that I'm a child of God? I'm going to tell you something. That does not prove that a person's a child of God because somebody gets healed. Is that right? Let me... Amen? Is that right? Amen. Why? Many times you get healed by your own faith. Many times it's your faith that touches God. Amen. And we can't uh, uh, tell whether a person... You, I'm going to preach this tonight. That I never thought of this study, and everybody will preach it. Uh, you can't tell, uh, amen, all the time, uh, amen, whether a person's anointed uh, when they're preaching or not, uh, because uh, unless you're really in tune uh, with the Holy Ghost uh, yourself, uh, and we've got a group uh, of people today uh, that's not in tune uh, enough with the Spirit of God, uh, amen, in this world uh, to know what the anointing of the Holy Ghost is. Is that right? Amen. Not, boy, I tell you, I didn't think about preaching this, that this is coming from up above. But we've got a lot of people think emotion is anointing. Emotion is not anointing. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is when the Word of God will drive something into your heart. You know what I thought last Sunday night? God gave me that message to the church. And I thought, boy, this is going to be a, a dry service. I hate to preach something like this. Amen. Because I, I, I love to preach, and boy, I love to see the, the power of God come down and touch men and women. But I didn't know, Brother, uh, Brother Leach, uh, I, believe somebody, I believe Keith told me said, that you said, boy, he's preaching right at me. I didn't know who you was. I didn't know who you was. I didn't even, I, I know I met you before service. Uh, amen. But you know what happened? The Holy Ghost, uh, amen, knew he was going to be here uh, and knew that he had a need. Uh, and the Holy Ghost knows what your need is. Uh, and if there's ever a day uh, that the church uh, needs to be wary, uh, amen, of the deceivers uh, that's in the world today, uh, amen, it's this day we're living in uh, right before the coming of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. We're looking for the sensational. And I'm going to tell you something. If, we're, if that's all we look for is the sensational, next week we'll have to have something more sensational. And next week something more sensational. Amen. To meet that desire and next week something more sensational everybody may not agree with me but I'm preaching what I feel God's given me tonight amen we're looking for something sensational in our nation that we live in I believe the Lord's coming back soon all restraints seem to have been lifted in this day that we're living in I got a letter today, uh, th uh, this week urging all the ministers, amen, to tell their people about some of the laws that they're trying to pass in Congress. There's one man especially that's a homosexual in Congress and he come out of the closet a long time ago and, and it wasn't uh, uh, too long ago that the young man that he was living with in Washington, D.C., and him and Ted Kennedy are sponsors of this bill. The young man that he was living with there in Washington, D.C., had a, a, a prostitute ring running out of his apartment, out of his home, and uh, uh, he is a known homosexual, and uh, this is... Uh, uh, Tim LaHaye, some of you know of Tim and Beverly LaHaye, and they've got, a, they've got a bill right now before Congress that it will be against the law, amen, to hire any homosexual in any religious order, amen, even to the religious broadcasters or religious schools or down to even the church, 
Amen. And he, you can even be taken to court, uh, amen, for not taking one in as a member. Now, this is not somebody that's been saved. Amen. This is somebody that's practicing that ungodly thing. Amen. And they're saying the church better wake up. Amen. To the day that we're living in. Amen. We're in the day when people are unashamed and the school teaches different choices of a lifestyle to our young kids. Is that right? I'm preaching to you the soon coming of the Lord. Amen. I want to tell you something. We're in a, a terrible day when the devil is raging like a lion and he's reaching in and he's grabbing this one and he's grabbing that one. Amen. And he's uh, uh, killing this and destroying this. Amen. But I believe the church has the power and has the authority of God to fight the fight of faith. Amen. I believe that. I believe iniquity is abounding. Amen. I believe that the lack of moral principle is in the world today. And that's why the world is abused. Amen. And people are abused in the world today. But I want to tell you something. I feel that I've got a hope. Amen. And you know what that hope is? That hope is Jesus Christ. He's still on the throne. He still has a plan. And he's still in control. Glory, you believe he's still in control? He's still in control today. He's got a plan. Nothing is taking him, amen, by surprise in this world we're living in. Amen. And I believe he's saying to the real church, it's time we lift up our heads, get our heads out of the sand. Amen. It's time that we set our affection on things above. Amen. I'll tell you, we worry about our children. Your children will be grown up, amen, and leave here before you know it. Amen. Your children, uh, when, when they're four or five, six years old, you think they're going to be around forever. And they're crying and you're uh, taking care of them and you're fixing them something to eat. I tell my children, Brother Atkins, it won't be long. Amen. That you'll be looking back and say, where'd they go? Where'd those years go? Where'd those years go? But I'll tell you, a lot of people, right when the children are in their formative years of really knowing Jesus Christ as Savior, amen, they throw up their hands and quit and say, what's the use? And then they lose their children and lose their whole family to the Lord. You know what, what I'm talking about. I've seen that happen so many times. Amen. But I'll tell you something. God's got a plan. He, the Lord's coming back so, soon. And He's everything. He's got it in control. He said to the church, lift up your heads. Amen. Gird up your loins. Fill up your lamps. Amen. Fill up your lamps. Get ready. Make preparations to leave here. Uh, amen. I, 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 I'm looking for a new heaven and a new earth. Amen. Now, I'll tell you the beauty of this world that we live in. I've traveled around and I've saw a lot of the beauty of this world. And there's a lot of beautiful places. I've never, I've always wanted to go out where Brother Sister Adkins went uh, a few weeks ago. I've always wanted to go out to out west and see the Grand Canyon. But I've never had the privilege of going out there. But uh, Sister Adkins, I believe, said, boy, there's some beautiful places out there. And when you look down in those canyons, but I'll tell you something, this whole world that we're living in is going to pass away after a while. Is that right? According to the Word of God. Amen. And I'm looking for a new heaven and a new earth. And the Bible said, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Amen. Now this may be a little different message tonight on the coming of the Lord. Amen. Why? I'm telling us, let us set our affection on things above. Let's, let's not look at the things of this earth. Let's not get carried away. Amen. With the things of this old world. Because they so soon pass. I remember Brother Earl Pruitt 
his father. He was a precious uh, uh, man. He he was about 70, uh, 75 years old. He's the one that married Mary and I. And I, that's the first wedding that he ever performed. I don't know. It may have been the only wedding. It wasn't the only one. It was the first one, anyway, that he had ever performed. And he was way up in his 60s then. And, and uh, he was probably, I, well, I was nervous. But I believe he was about as nervous as I was. Amen. Brother Pruitt, we, all of us boys got saved. Uh, amen. And we started singing and we started traveling. And boy, Brother Pruitt was so thrilled. He had three sons. Uh, that was Earl and Carl and Homer. Uh, amen. And you know what? Everybody thought I was a Pruitt too. They'd, they'd come up to the assembly and say, Hello, Brother Pruitt. How you doing? I told so many people that I wasn't a Pruitt. I was Cornelius. I just started saying, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> doing pretty good. I, I, I just even quit saying that I, my name was was Cornelius. Uh, amen. But he was so thrilled with us. Uh, amen. And wherever we went, he wanted to go. Uh, amen. And you know, us young, young fellows, we was full of, of uh, vim and vigor and, and uh, sometimes we'd drive all night. And I never will forget old Brother Pruitt. He wore those round glasses. Uh, amen. He didn't have these newfangled uh, square ones. or uh, He wore them old round glasses. Uh, and I'd look at his eyes, uh, amen, and he, his eyes would be just as red, and I don't care how fast you drove, uh, Brother Pruitt just sat there and grinned, uh, amen, he'd just sat there and, and grinned, and, and uh, when you, no matter what you do, uh, amen, he wouldn't say anything, he was just glad, uh, amen, that his sons uh, was taken off the street, uh, and I'll tell you something, uh, those boys, uh, and I was with them some, uh, but they were rough boys, uh, Amen. I remember uh, many things uh, that they would have been put in prison for today if they'd have been caught. Uh, and we was all like that uh, before God saved us. Uh, but boy, he would go wherever we went. He'd stay up all night. Uh, amen. He was happy. Uh, he got sick. And I never will forget, uh, amen, that Brother Earl talked to his dad. Uh, he said, Dad, uh, I know uh, uh, you're getting old now and, and you're sick and probably never get well. Uh, amen. He was 78 uh, years old, I believe, uh, then, or maybe about 80. Uh, he said, does it seem like you've lived? I know that's not real old. Uh, amen. But he said, does it seem like you've lived uh, a long time? Uh, he said, no, uh, it seems like uh, I've just been here uh, a short time. Uh, you know what the Bible said? Uh, amen. The days of man, uh, amen, are few uh, and full of trouble. Uh, is that right? But I want to tell you something, church. If there's ever a day that we ought to set our affection on things above and look up and not worry about the things of this world, but put our trust in a living God, it's this day we're living in. Because He is coming back soon. Coming back after a people that have made their self ready. Did you hear that? That have made their self ready. He don't make us do anything. That's right. We've got a lot of these modern counselors today that tells you that you, you better watch how you raise your children. Back when I was a boy, and I, I, my dad didn't abuse me. My dad and mother loved me. But I'm going to tell you something. My dad got a big old belt. They wore big, thick leather belts back then. They was pretty wide. My dad never used the, leather, the razor strap. Some of you probably got a whipping with a razor strap. Some of you raising your hands. Floyd, did you get a whipping with a razor strap? A double one. <laughs> but you know what? My dad would take that belt and he'd come down and come down and he'd hit me. Hey Amen. He never did kill me. <laughs> I thought I was going to die. <laughs> and then when he'd get through, sometimes I'd see tears in his eyes. And he'd say, Fred... This hurts me more than it hurts you. How many's ever heard that? This hurts me more than it hurts you. 
I'd go in the other room and I'd pout. I'd say, boy, as soon as I get to be 16 years old and I can get me a job, I'll get out of this house. I'll leave here. I laughed a couple times. I come back about supper time. <laughs> I'll get out of here. But you know what? I'd sit there and thinking. Pretty soon mom would come in and say, Fred, come on in and get something to eat. I don't want anything to eat. Oh, I was dying to get something to eat. <laughs> you know, has your kid ever acted that way? Have you ever acted that way? <laughs> dying to get something to eat. But dad would take his arms and put them around me and a little later and he said, Fred, I love you. I love you and what I'm trying to do is to tell you and to, to guide you, uh, amen, that when you get older, amen, you'll know how to live. Thank you. You'll know that I love you. Amen. The modern counselors today say you better watch your kind of war your children's mind and I believe that's why we've got a lot of trouble amen, amen. with families today amen. boy I didn't think of that either but I'll say it anyway because we've let our kids go yes. if you have to correct them correct them yes. but let them know you love them I'm not talking about abuse Amen. I'm not talking about, amen, hatred and abuse and, and hitting one when you're mad, but I'm talking about correction. Is that right? Amen. We're a child of God today. Amen. There's times that we need to be corrected, and you know what corrects us uh, is the Word of God. Uh, and it's not good. Uh, amen. When we get corrected. Uh, right then we don't feel good about it. Uh, but if we set our affection uh, on things above, uh, God will lead us uh, directly uh, into heaven after a while. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise God. We're in a day... Amen. We're looking for a new heaven and a new earth. This world is not my home. I'm a citizen of another country. I thank God for the privilege. I told my son the other day, Faye, you pray for Faye when you pray. She cut her hand uh, washing dishes today, broke a glass, and this evening they had to take her to the hospital, and I don't know how many stitches she had to get in her uh, hand. And they called Keith home from work. And uh, he called me, and he, he went back to work after they took her to the uh, hospital there. And he said, he said, I told these fellows I was going to make her still wash the rest of them dishes. <laughs> He's kidding them. I'm kidding a little bit. But uh, now I forgot what I was telling Keith. <laughs> yeah, I told him. I said, you ought to be ashamed of yourself not registering. He said, he told me who he wanted for president. I said, have you registered? No, I'm not registered. Too many people afraid they're going to get called to a jury. Do jury duty. If they, but now, did you know they take it off your driver's license now? You may have to quit driving. They, they take it off your driver's license now. Amen. He said, no, I'm not registered. I said, that's a shame. Amen. To live in this country that we live in. I may be hitting you, I don't know. <laughs> and the privileges that we've got and not even vote. I'm going to vote. But thank God I'm really not a citizen of this country. Oh, I, I could almost shout right now because I feel my citizenship. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. In 1957, I changed my citizenship. Amen. Uh, what is it? My citizenship uh, is in heaven. Uh, and I'm not going to do anything uh, to jeopardize that. Uh, amen. I'm going to be a good ambassador of that country that I'm going to after a while. Amen. amen. I don't know when it'll be. It might be morning, noon, or night. I saw in the paper where a man named George Paul died. Is, is that the man... We know from Trenton, 72. George Paul, they didn't have any uh, 
any uh, 72 72 years old but it was just uh, they said they'd give more details later but anyway my neighbor is named Paul and his dad's named George Paul and he's 72 years old and I run out this afternoon and run across the street I said Mr. Paul is that your dad that passed away he said no it's not him he said it's somebody probably a third cousin a little relation and then I thought of that other brother George Paul that used to attend church up in Trenton Michigan and uh, it's, that's probably who it is and anyway I thought we don't know when we might go out of this life but the Lord's coming soon let us set our affection on things above not on the things of this world so that we'll make heaven our home how many knows that's the truth tonight what I've told you amen let's stand together Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Help us to be ready, for in such an hour as we think not, we know the Word says you're coming back. And Lord, we want to be ready for that return. And we pray, dear God, that everyone under the sound of our voice, Lord, as their pastor, that we could teach them, Lord, the right way. That we could teach them, Lord, there's only one way to eternal life, and that's through and by you and living right and living holy. And help us, Lord, to get back and dust off that old landmark and get back to on solid rock with you that you might work in our lives to lead others to Jesus. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to sing a song, He's Coming Back and I'm the Only Reason. Let me say something before I sing. Did you know it's not easy pastoring church in this day that we live in? It's not easy. It's hard. You have pressures that nobody know about. I know because I've been a pastor 32 years. It's a lot harder, Brother Adkins, than it was when I started because you've got so many different philosophies and different beliefs. We've got television to compete with now. Now, I'm talking about Christian television. Some of it's good and some of it's not worth 10 cents. And it's hard. It's hard sometimes to try to find out what it is that you can say that will enthuse and inspire the church. Because if the church is not inspired, we're not going to be seeking more of God. We're just going to be going along day by day. And it's hard. It takes being on your knees. There's many, many hours that nobody knows that I kneel down and pray. I say, God, give me something to touch our people's heart. My job is to lead everybody to a saving grace of Jesus Christ. You know what I'm talking about. I'm not a, I'm not a judge. Amen. I don't condemn. Jesus said he didn't come to condemn. And we don't. But I'll tell you something. The Lord has given us a mandate to preach the gospel. And then it's up to you whether or not we're going to accept the word of God. Is that right? And there's coming a day, amen, when we'll give an account. Me as a pastor, and oh, I say sometimes, Lord, this is an awesome responsibility yes. that you've laid on me, and not only me, but other pastors, amen, to preach the whole gospel and not have any, any preference for anybody, amen, but to preach the truth and to have, think that the souls of men and women might be, we might be held responsible for them someday. I don't want to be held responsible for anybody's soul. I want to preach the gospel. And I'm saying it's time that we set our affection on things above because he's coming back. And you know what? The Lord made a promise to return. And he said, listen, if nobody in this church serves me but Louie, Amen. I'm going to come back. Yes. If nobody in this church serves me but Sister Beeler, 
I'm coming back. It thrilled me. I, I love Sister Beeler. Amen. She's been a Christian here. Got saved when my dad was pastor back in the 40s. And I can, I still remember one song that we uh, was taught when we was over at Franklin Street. To, that song, it's different now. And Sister Beeler, I still remember you shouting up on that stage there. And I saw her stand up and praise the Lord a while ago. And it thrilled my heart. Amen. I thought that's what makes it, amen, good. And that's what gives us the unction to go on. That people are grasping what you say and measuring up to the Word of God and living for the Lord. Because he's coming back soon. But if nobody in this church serves God but you, it will not hinder him from coming back. You believe that? Let's sing that. He's coming back again. And I'm the only reason. Like a groom, he is prepared. For
that is capable of income and that that flyer had been practiced for about two or three years. To the same on that day when he would be coronated king as all of Israel, and they said one of the voices that may have gotten that I didn't go see, but I don't know. And I'll tell you something, that's nothing that'll be according to the sound that will be when all of God's people get home and we sing that song and the redeemed together. Is that right? Praise God. Amen. Somebody want to testify. Real quick. Anyway.
and she knows what I like. And I'll tell you something, if I couldn't come here and talk to you <coughs> if I didn't live right in front of her. That's right. I thank God for her. I think that's wonderful. Amen. Let me how you feel about it. Yes. We're going to pray that Newt's got a girl on his arm. And uh, the Lord don't take that off tonight, which he is able to. He's going to have to have it cut off. Let's pray that the Lord take that off. You remember I preached this? What did I preach on this morning? Faith, faith, faith. As your faith is.
would go all the week, but I don't know who the, the other speakers would be. Dale Atkins Thursday night. And they start at 7 o'clock. If you'd like to go up, they need help there. And that's where Brother uh, Dennis was planning on his pastor. Anybody like to have a coupon for a picture for the for yourself and then for the uh, directory? You can see Sister Mary.